what is up human nation today's video i'm reacting to is by the youtube channel parts fun known and it's 10 ways wwe has changed for the better 10 i think there's more than 10 but there's some uh we'll see what happens because yeah I barely yes, it. you oh read the title God, of the video correctly. So despite loud. WWE doing their level best to drive away as many of their diehard fans as they could in 2021, despite committing a babality on the greatest part of their product, despite Yay. releasing swathes of talent, of some of whom fans had hoped would be the future of the company, and despite the abject losses of a group literally called The New Day on a show literally so called Day Dolph One, Z which is Z on the nose as meta. And I'm so surprised Dolph Ziggler is in this company. He's been there forever. Boards get. We're starting this year with a purely positive WWE list. Why? Well, partly because Ollie Davis told me to, and who am I to argue with my sinewy, weak, tea loving, incredibly intense content overlord, but also to provide a much needed sense of balance and something to anchor our continued 2022 coverage of a wrestling company that otherwise makes supporting it sincerely tricky. Whether it's. Yeah, and it's such a chore to get through because there's a lot of bad shit in 2022, 2021, 2020. So on and so on, but let's see what he has to say for 10 ways. Golden era of the That's 80s, the vibrancy of the attitude era, or the lunacy of ruthless aggression. WWE fans consistently compare the big dub to its past glories. And yes, in many ways, the current product is worse, but it's always yeah. worth remembering that WWE has improved themselves in a number of different ways over the past decade. How many ways? Well, I'm Adam Hailing from Parts Fun Known, and here are 10 ways WWE have changed for the better. Let's and here are the one way you can help us change for the better. Subscribe. It's by liking and subscribing. subscribing it helps us get bigger and better and 2022 and other buzzwords subscribe please number 10 actual finishes mostly the 80s were a hell of a time to be a wrestling fan the oh, rock yeah. wrestling connection the numerous amazing characters that made up the mid card to hulkamania the incredibly deep tag division those were oh my god good. Tag division was, was also amazing. synonymous with wrestling in the 80s no f ever losing seriously for modern fans who've got used to a satisfying match conclusion on pay-per-view 80s wwe is borderline unwatchable with oh, only 75 yeah. percent of matches ending with the old standard double count out for wrestlemania by for even back guys like roddy piper and jim duggan refusing to ever do a job even the attitude era was plagued with endless dqs and run-ins it's why we get up in arms over finishes like rhea ripley versus charlotte hell in a cell last year or the fiend versus seth rollins because they're far and away the outliers oh, that was Day and Shit, age. Say what you want about some of the more questionable pay-per-view results we get today. At least WWE don't end the main event of WrestleMania on a f***ing DQ anymore. Here's looking at you, WrestleMania Oh 8, my you god, I forgot about turd. that. And speaking of WrestleMania, number nine, two-night WrestleManias. Please, 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 um, please. I'm iffy on that. Two nights of WrestleManias, sure, it could be adding more people, but it's still two nights of WrestleManias. That's a lot, though. That's a lot. He's... Please, please, WWE, keep the two-night WrestleMania forever. For Mania's no, 32 to not 35, forever. WWE's granddaddy of them all lost its goddamn mind in its old age, with each show clocking it at an unwatchable five f***ing hours, not even taking the pre-show into account. That is too Never count much the wrestling for one Never sitting, count the please, and thank you, and f*** you. For four straight years, WrestleMania was an exhausting slog that dampened even the most hardcore fans' enthusiasm for even the dreamiest of dream matches. The prospect of instead having two three-hour shows to blow off the year's feuds is an absolute godsend. Allows yeah, for long, multiple three main hours, events, so it's that way better, yeah. platform to stars who otherwise wouldn't receive it. But gives it, extra time. But the thing is, when you have two nights of WrestleMania, you have guys that don't even deserve to be on WrestleMania. Like Otis versus Dolph Ziggler. Why the fuck would you put Otis... I like Otis, but really, why Otis on WrestleMania? I said I like Otis, but it's, it's just weird to me that they put him on there. I'm to certain matches that might otherwise be shortchanged on a single card and get- Or Elias versus- what's his face? Barry Corbin? I don't this know. This is a bloody break to recharge our batteries. This is a positive change. Please keep it, WWE. We beg of you. Number eight, better athletes. Once upon a time in the 1980s, the average WWE mid-carder was a barrel-chested, unshaven man who'd smoke a cigarette to warm up, plod down to the ring, have his high spot of the match be an arm drag for wandering away to drink a hotel dry and fight a policeman. A lot of that was excused because guys like Jake Roberts or the Ultimate Warrior were amazing characters, but there's no denying that today's roster is top-to-bottom premier 
athletes and also Omos is there. Even yeah. the main event of I was today, to say, previously almost, the home almost. of slow giants who taunted more than they tussled is now whip fast and crazy agile. The day one result is mind boggling, but you can't deny that all five men gave it socks. Even after all the releases, WWE's roster is packed to the gills with super athletes. If only the big double oh, yeah, the Shinsuke the is still potential. There. Every pay-per-view, sorry, premium live event premium. could be the wrestling show of the year. Number seven, a better mix of kayfabe and reality. Ever since the pipe bomb, reality and fan expectation have been a fundamental part of WWE storytelling. The fact isn't always to WWE's liking. Daniel Bryan's road to WrestleMania 30 was not the plan and let them Did never convince the pipe who bomb? it was. But I'm pretty sure it started large, before the that. The fans are smarter, more opinionated and more willing to enforce their opinions on the WWE product is a good thing. It gave us the man Becky Lynch, Sasha Banks versus Bianca in the main event of Night 1 WrestleMania and numerous other examples of fans forcing WWE's hand. Compared to previous generations where the fans had next to no say in who was in the main event, today's product is still occasionally, not always, but occasionally willing to bend its course based on who the Sometimes. fans decree is most Sometimes. deserving. And then Big E gets beaten by Brock Lesnar and no damn it, we're staying positive. Number six, Roman Reigns. And talking yeah. about fans receiving their ultimate... I admit, I like Roman Reigns' entire thing as a tribal chief. At least it's interesting now because before he was massively boring. But now as a tribal chief, he is really the man right now. And I'll show up now. I'll show up. Indication. We hate to say we told you so, except no, we don't. We love to say we told you so. And after years of the toxic culture growing and booing around perennially miscast Uber babyface Roman Reigns, WWE finally turned him heel and we f told you so. With the possible exception of Brian Danielson and Adam Page, heel Roman Reigns is still, and has been for 17 months, the best thing in the professional thing ever. wrestling. Genuinely, it two feels like WWE hasn't champion. had a character this Almost compelling, this right place, right time, this big match reliable since Austin, or even Hogan. Promos, wrestling, merch, main events, sheer star power. There's nothing else quite like the Tribal Chief. God knows who's going to be capable to beat him for the Universal Championship. I don't even know who can beat him. Is problem, but it's also WWE's go on for problem years to years solve, because whoever does is going to be a megastar because of it unless it's Brock Lesnar it shouldn't be him you guys please please number five more POC champions since the inception of the WWE championship in 1963 right up until 2018 which is 55 years for anyone who's not so hot on their Steiner math there was precisely one black WWE champion in the last two oh, years there have been three at a time where AEW's president has found himself embroiled in a Twitter controversy over a perceived lack of diversity in his top stars whichever side of that argument you fall on the same cannot be leveled at WWE these days. In the last few years, WWE's had a Samoan wrestler as its biggest star, booked a WrestleMania main event between two black women, crowned every member of the New Day in one case, literally. It may have taken WWE a long time to become as diverse as it has, but it's as inclusive yeah, it took a roster them a long as time, possibly look at the 80s, in how the was, history in of the wrestling 90s in terms of motivating the stars of tomorrow. That is a wonderful thing. Likewise, number four, fewer stereotypes. Okay, yeah. like finding 10 ways WWE has improved is difficult to the point that, yes, I'm dedicating an entire or Congratulating Express. WWE for not being as offensive as it used to be. Orient well done, Express. WWE, big gold star for you. Among the problematic tropes that used to be everywhere, but Orient Express. Nowhere in WWE's product, sneaky Japanese salt throwing bastards, black and Samoan people having Orient harder Express. heads than everyone else, Mexicans riding lawnmowers, people doing blackface, Islamic people summoning terrorists through prayer, foreigners screaming death to America, and Vince McMahon saying the N word on pay per view. Sorry, premium live event. Sure, WWE occasionally still Express. showcases a heel whose main crime is being proud of the country they come from but by and large things are better these days mostly a bit and speaking of divisions who've received a million percent more respect than they used to number three women's wrestling finally Cast your minds back 10 years in 2012 women's wrestling was an irrelevance at wrestlemania it 28 the was only women's match ass. was Beth no Phoenix and Torres versus Kelly Kelly and Maria Menounos at SummerSlam 2012 there wasn't even a women's match at all it was truly the era of the Divas Championship piss break match in the years since then, the NXT women's division it's changed the better. game, the women's revolution happened, women are the women's actually money in the amazing. bank matches, Royal Rumbles, two separate WrestleMania main events. We have the luxury of complaining that stars like Becky Lynch or Charlotte Flair win too often on pay-per-view, sorry, premium live event, when 10 years ago, such a complaint would be unheard of. By far and away, credible women's wrestling belts that mean something, stars capable of shouldering pay-per-views. WWE's women's division is by far the company's most visible change for the better. Yeah. But also whatever it's doing with its women's 
tag championships like Jesus what, 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 what are you doing, doing? With number two a healthier locker room ah yes says Let's the Undertaker leaning and, back uh, on the throne in his room wearing one of his right wing tees and sipping on a cold glass of guns and cigarettes the olden days when men were men the Undertaker came under fire last year for bemoaning the fact that WWE's locker room has gone soft and that nowadays the wrestlers were more well, he's old school, playing man. video games he and can't. indulging in a more traditional backstage antics i.e. getting addicted to pain medication carrying weapons and lamping each other in the face while WWE still fosters a general a sense time. of paranoid misery in its locker room don't fix what isn't broken I guess at least there's been a significant drop off in drug addled macho bullshit over the years, a prevalence of high-level athletes and good old-fashioned nerds has given rise to a locker room that's more focused on clean living and PS5 than on self-medication and rage. And as DDP himself would say, that's not a bad thing. That's, that's a, good. a good thing. And number one, protecting the wrestlers' yes, brains. Finally. WWE doesn't let its wrestlers the crack each other over the head with steel furniture anymore. Not much more you can say about that, really. Between the wellness policy, a healthier locker room, and far more concussion awareness leading to hard bands on head ah, and brain-based he offense, hopefully, we're going to see far fewer wrestlers dying in their 60s. I don't really have a joke to follow that bit up. So here's a lovely picture of a corgi instead. Isn't that lovely? There are yes. lots of criticisms that can rightfully be hurled in WWE's direction from their seeming hatred of tag team wrestling, the women's mid-card stuttering recently, the Saudi shows and just oh, everything like else. Show. But in at least this way, WWE has improved light years above where oh, it used yeah, to definitely. be. How it used to be and how it is now. As close to a smile as we can, right? Right, and that's our list. Let's try and have a positive comment. Oh my, it's like the fur, like protecting their brains. Holy shit! Like in the eighties and nineties, all those unprotected chair shots, like Ken Shamrock, Mankind getting hit eight times at the Royal Rumble. Oh, so many things. Uh, oh my god. Yeah, I'm surprised some of them are not even brain damaged. But like, like lately now, like, I before I always would say like, hey, we need blood. But then I saw the AEW match with CM Punk and MJF, and even the people I was with, I was they're saying like, "God, I knew we wanted blood, but this is way too much." I know it's an AEW match I'm talking about, and this is WWE. It's kind of the same thing I'm talking about with blood and all that stuff. But yeah, we changed our when we were young, and we would always ask for blood. But now watching with blood as an adult, <laughs> it's not the same anymore. But it's good on them that they don't do chair shots anymore, and that. Less wrestlers are doing drugs and drinking it up and having more of gaming and stuff. Because, like, in the 80s, it was, like, a drug-fueled place. Jesus, was it ever. But anyway, that's a great video from Parts Fun Known. Always have great content. Anyway, that's it for now. Humanoid Nation, Humanoid Freakout. Bye. Pasito a pasito, suave, suave, suave.